Okay, welcome. This is Dr. Morton, and uh, just uh, want to uh, first apologize for missing class today. We were going to have, uh, I did say we'd have class on Wednesday at 2, and I, I know some bunch of you came in and I wasn't there. I, sorry, I, I, I had a note, I had written it down in a little note, uh, but I totally forgot. Uh, I was went to my lab and just got distracted, and, and then our, our chairman called a 2.30 class, uh, 2.30 meeting for the ABET stuff that's going to happen next week. We're, we're getting our uh, ABET visit for our credentialing our programs. So we need to get this right. So sorry, I was just distracted. My bad. Uh, you know, I'll own it. Okay, so this is uh, class day 13. Um, and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go over the test. And then um, next week on Wednesday, I will meet with you. And uh, anybody that wants to uh, get some points back, come to class. And, and uh, what I would like you to do, I'm going to turn on uh, right now. I'm going to turn on so you can see the, the problems you missed. So hang on, let me do that. Okay, I turned it on. I, I haven't actually done this before on Blackboard, so I'm not sure. Uh, but hopefully you should be able to see it. So uh, you can check and see. And if not, send me an email and I'll, I'll see if I have to check some other stuff. But you should be able to see the test. Um, you can't do it again because you, you only get one attempt, but you should be able to see the problems you missed. Okay? All right, so let's take a quick look at the syllabus. So um, so here we are on day 13. Uh, so this, this uh, Saturday, uh, the 24th, uh, quiz 6 is due. So don't forget that. No, that's not right. Uh, yeah, the 24th, that's right. 24th. And then... Um, then next week we have um, uh, homework. Um, yeah, homework six is due on uh, the 28th next week, and the 28th is. Let's see what is it? It is. It's Wednesday, so it's a week from today. Okay. Alrighty, and then uh, so we we we're covering K maps, and uh, I'll go back and uh, so here on the 21st, yeah. So we'll do, um, I'll, I'll pick back up with that, but today I'm just going to work the test. Okay. All right, so now for that, here, is the, here are the figures. First, I'm just going to go through and work all the figures on the test. And, and then um, uh, I'll talk about them, maybe I'll write some things down. And then, um, and, and, and then if we have time, I'll, I'll maybe go through some of the general questions and some other stuff. All right. Okay, we'll start with the first one. So you're designing a system to test servos by hooking them up to a test jig and running them through a set of test maneuvers. You step an, stick an optical shaft encoder target onto the servo hub and then measure the angle uh, registered at each of the five points during the test routine. The sensor must be able to read the angle over the entire 180 degrees plus or minus one degree. Okay, so a couple of things to think about. Let me, uh, so let me switch over here to the paper. So one of the things that I want you to think about here is, so first off, if you have to represent 180 things, uh, so from 0 to 180, uh, plus or minus, plus or minus 1 degree, so that's 181 things because you have to account for the 0 start point. So it's 1 plus 180, so it's 181 things. All right, so first off, how many, how many, how many, uh, how many bits or how many how many optical tracks do you have to have? Each track gives you one bit. So, so uh, the powers of two. Well, so uh, two to the seventh would be 128. Not big enough. So eight bits. 256 uh, are well 255. So that's a little has a little extra room, but that's what you need. So you need eight bits. So you need eight optical tracks. I think this one actually might be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Yeah, it is eight. It's eight bits. All right, uh, but it. I don't think this one actually is uh, a gray code. It's kind of screwed up. So, or maybe it is, but I can't. It, it doesn't look like it. But it may just be the resolution. All right. So, so two hundred fifty-five things. So you need eight tracks on your optical shaft encoder sticker there. What if you stick it on and it's off by say ten degrees? Is that going to affect your precision, your accuracy, or both? Well, it will not affect your precision. You'll still be able to read it just as precisely as you can, 8 bits plus or minus a bit, but um, assuming you're using a gray code. 
And of course, you'll have to have a lookup table uh, because the gray code isn't, uh, isn't mathematically correct. It, 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 it isn't a computational code. Uh, so you have to have a, a, a table. You look up your gray code, and it tells you the angle that represents. Okay. Um, so we're going to, uh, so if it's off by 10 degrees, we'll still read it precisely. So if we read it 10 times in a row, we would read it plus or minus one bit, but, uh, but we'd be 10 degrees off. So it affects accuracy, but not precision. Uh, okay, and then uh, let's see. So what were some of the other questions? How many bands? Uh, do we consider the optical shaft encoder a, an analog or a digital sensor? Well, it, it is inherently digital. Now I will grant you that the, the photo cells, looking at the bands, that's, that's an analog system, but it's going to be all built into a little device when what it's going to crank out is an 8-bit result. So you're going to get 8 bits out of this sensor and, and it really is pretty much a digital sensor. Your bands are very much digital so it, I think that's a fair assessment. Um, uh, if when we s transmit the information after we get the information well of course we want to use a gray code on the, on the optical bands so that no so that at any point in the transition, that there's never more than one bit that changes, uh, and so that's how we—that's what we have to do to get uh, our accuracy. Uh, if if more than one bit changes, then we have uncertainty in more than one bit, and if all the bits change at a given interface, you could have complete uncertainty, which is completely unacceptable. Uh, that means you wouldn't have any idea where you were. Now there'd be a lot of time where you would know, but the problem is you don't know when you know and when you don't know if there's a point where you don't know. Right? Because how do you know that you're at the point you don't know? I hope that makes sense. But the idea is you can only, at any given point, anywhere on the dial, you can only have uncertainty in one bit. And when your bits transition under your photocells, and you go from reading, a, say, a 0 to a 1 or a 1 to a 0, there's a transition point where that bit's changing. And at that changing point, uh, there's a little uncertainty whether whether you're really in one sector or the other sector. So you have uncertainty in that one bit. If only one bit changes, you only have one bit uncertainty. Uh, but if more bits change at some points, then you have more uncertainty. Okay, enough said about that. If you want to transmit the information, now we're not talking about a gray code, we're talking about a digital signal, and we're going to send it over a wire uh, to someplace, and we need an error correction code. And the only one we've really talked about was parity. Okay, and that the idea of parity is let's say you have you have um, let's say you have um, seven bits like an ASCII number you're sending out say ASCII digits, um, so so we we have a little word here and and so seven of the bits are going to be data, and one bit so we have uh, we have zero all the way to seven okay one two three four five six seven eight there are eight bits, okay so seven of these bits say these these seven our data, and then this last one is a parity bit. And what we do, let's say our data is 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, and we're running odd parity, all right, then we count up the ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ones, that's odd, so we put a 0 in our parity bit. When the data is received, you count the ones, and if it's an odd number, you say it's okay. If it's an even number, you say you better send it again, something happened in the transmission. So that's one example of an error correcting code. Um, we used to use that all the time when we had dial-up modems and we were going over uh, standard uh, plain old telephone lines that had noise on them. Sometimes we had noisy signals and we did have to use parity bits. But these days we, you know, most of our most of our broadband connections are are already they're they're encoded with IP protocols and stuff, and you don't really have to worry about it. There is error correction built into those, but there's very little problems with the errors. Um, because uh, we have such great connections like 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 uh, fiber to the household and stuff like that. Okay. Now let's look look at these. So we so we're going to we're going to convert decimal into binary. Okay, so 41. So if we take 41 and we divide it by 2, that's 20. Remainder 1. And we divide 2 20 by 2, that's 10. Remainder 0. And 10 by 2 is 5. Remainder 0. And 2 by 5 is 2, remainder 1. 2 into 2 is 1, remainder 0. And 2 into 1 is 0, remainder 1. So our actual, this is the high order bit. This is the low order bit. So the number is actually 1, 0, 0, 
one zero one. Now let's see if you could actually see that. Yeah, you could. That's good. Okay. So one zero one zero zero. Now let's check it. So that's one two four eight sixteen thirty two. Thirty two and eight is forty, and one is forty one. So it works. All right. So our so now we'll write this here in binary. Um, one zero one zero zero one. Now I'm going to go one two three four, and I'm going to pad and I'll put my one back there. I cross over it. So I have zero zero one zero. That's that's a that's that's a two in hex, and one zero zero one is nine. So it's two nine hex twenty nine hex, and then the other one is seven c eight. So seven c eight. I know how that goes. It's going to go zero one one one, and eight is uh, one zero zero zero. All right and we'll, we'll put the little divider line there and then the point eight is just one zero 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 and of course you can drop the leading and trailing zeros if you want and then you can calculate what this is um, so the eight the eight in decimal is going to be 0.5 because it's eight sixteenths okay um, or it's 0.1 in binary that's one half and then we have z we have one two four eight and then sixteen 32, so 8, 16, 32, 64. All right, so um, 16 and 64 are 70, 80, plus 32 is, uh, is 112, plus 8, 120. So it's 120.5. All right. Okay, I have to check my math here. I, I was writing too small. So I had, uh, so here's the number what so 7c turns into uh, 1.0011111 so that's that's so that'd be 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 all right 4 and 16 is 20 8 and 32 is 40 so that's 60 60 and 64 is 124 so I, I yeah so it's 120 4.5. Okay. All right. Okay. Now we have um, we've got a subtraction problem and a multiplication. So we'll do those. Uh, I'll just go through those real quick. All right. So let's go back to the paper. Okay. So multi the subtraction. So 0 from 1 is 1. 1 from 1 is 0. 1 from 0, can't do it, so we have to borrow this 1. We put a 0 there and a 2 here. 1 from 2 is 1. 1 from 0, we can't do it, so we borrow this 1. We put a 0 there and a 2 here. We borrow 1 from that. That leaves a 1 and a 2 next to it. And then we borrow 1 from that 2. We have a 1 there and a 2 next to that. It's hard to write this in. 1 from the 2 is a 1. And then a 0 from the 1 is a 1. And a 0 from the 1 is a 1. And then 1 from 0 doesn't work, so we borrow a 2 there, and 1 from 2 is 1. So the answer is 1111.101. And I'm pretty sure that's right. But we could double check it. Um, yeah, no. I'm pretty sure that's right. Let me just double check it, though. Okay, I, I copied it over. I'm going to do it again. From zero from zero, zero from one is one. One from one is zero. One from zero can't do it, so we're going to take this. We get a zero there, and we have a two there. One from two is one. One from zero, we can't do it, so we cross this out and have a zero there. We have a two here, but we have to borrow from that, so we cross that out. We have a one and a two here. We cross this out, and we have a one and a two here. One from two is one. Zero from one is one. Zero from one is one. One from zero can't do it. So we have a zero there and a two there. One from two is one. So it is one 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 point one oh one. It checks. Okay. And then finally this last one, um, this multiplication. Let's do that real quick. Okay. So here it is. Remember with multiplication you either write zeros or you write the uh, multiple can. So it depends on the multiplier digit. The first multiplier digit is zero, so we write zeros. I'm just going to write five of them, because we'll ignore that. 
one time then one now we just copy this one zero zero one one but we have to shift it one to the left now we have zeros shift again now we have now we copy the multiple can again one uh, zero zero one one now we have to now we have all the partial products and we have to add them up so zero one zero one zero uh, sorry one here one here one here one there so we get uh, one 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 zero one zero and that's the answer and um, what we're multiplying so this is this is 10 and this number here is um, 1 2 4 8 16 so 8 and 16 are 24 plus 1 that's 25 uh, so 10 times 25 should be 250. Let's see if it works out to be that. So we have uh, uh, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. All right? So 128 plus, well, uh, so let's see. So 128 and 32 would be 160. So that crosses these out. And then we have 64 and 16, so that's going to be 80. So that's going to be uh, 8 and 16, that's going to be, what, uh, 240. And then 8 plus 2 is 10, add 10 more. And we cross these out, and we get 250. So it does check. All right, so that's right. All right, and so... Perfect. Okay, let's transition that back. All right, so the last thing is minus 48. We want to represent, to convert 48 to, to binary and then represent it as a minus 48 in 8 bits. Now I emphasize the 8 because you can't do it in 6 bits, and I'll talk about that. All right, so let's, let's do this one. All right, so we're going to do 48. Let's see, sorry, I need to transition again. Okay, so we do 48 divided by 2. 48 divided by 2 is uh, 24. Remainder 0. 2 into 24 is 12. Remainder 0. 2 into 12 is 6. Remainder 0. 2 into 6 is 3. Remainder 0. 2 into 3 is 1. Remainder 1. And 2 into 1 is 0. Remainder 1. So it's 1, 1. Zero, 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 zero. Remember, this is low and this is high. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four zeros. That's right. And then let's check it. So one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. So sixteen and thirty-two. Thirty-two is eight, uh, forty-eight. Oh, that's exactly correct. Okay. Now notice we have six bits. Now we want to do a minus, and this is this is 48. So in six bits, we we can have so we, we take we take uh, two to the sixth, and that that equals uh, 64, and then we get half of that. We get 32 positive and 32 negative, but the, the the positives have to start with zero. So we go from minus 32 to 31 to positive 31 to positive 31. 48 won't fit in that. That's why we have to pad it out with some leading zeros to 8 bits. Well, now when we have 8 bits, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we can convert it. Now the way we do it by, you know, the way humans do it, uh, not computers. Computers invert every bit and add 1, but it, rather than do that, all we're going to do is we're just going to copy bits till we get to the first one, starting from the right, and then copy the first one as well, and then invert every bit after that. So we're going to copy all these zeros, copy the one and then we're going to invert. So now we have 1101000. One, one, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. This equals minus 48 in two's complement 8 bits. 8 bits. And this is uh, plus 48. Now notice you you can't you can't count up the binary bits here and figure out what it is. If we added up the bits, so what is it? It's it's a 1 2 4 8 16, 64, 128. So 16 and 64 is 80. So that's 208. 
So that's 208 if it's an unsigned number, but it's not an unsigned number, it's two's complement, so it's at minus 48. So this, this transition is kind of hard to figure out. You, you just have to, what I do is I just convert it back. I, I two's complement again, takes it back to what it was, and then I can read the positive number, and I know that that's what the negative number represented. Uh, <clears throat> okay, it, so that's good. Uh, and let's see if there's anything I missed here. Not really. All right. Um, so let's go back to there. All right. So we're going to scroll up. Remember, if you don't pad it out to 8 bits and you try and convert it, because four, minus 48 won't fit in 6 bits, you get garbly gook. So don't do that. All right. This is pretty straightforward. So I think I may, uh, yeah, let me do it over here. I think I have it. Okay, so we'll just do this. Let's transition again. So first off, just to get started, what is this theorem? Is this, is this, the, is this, C, is this conversion theorem two, the second distributive law? No, it's not. It's, it's C3. It's the multiplying and factoring. Because we have, uh, we have a, we have a, um, we have a y prime and a y, and here we have a y prime and a y. So it's multiplying the factor. So this y prime connects with the z prime, and the y connects with the, the x prime, and that gives you y prime plus z quantity times x prime plus y, or y plus x prime. But I wrote it alphabetically. I mean, yeah. All right. So we've done, we've we've done uh, this uh, this term on the left side and this term on the left side, and now we just have to write the result of anding these two terms together. Well, they have to both be one. So one and one is a one. One and one is a one. One and one is a one. Zero and one is a zero. One and zero is a zero. Um, one and zero is a zero. One and one is a one, and one and zero is a zero. Or zero and one is a zero. And then here we just have to or these. So one ord with zero is one. One ord with zero is one. Zero ord with one is one. Zero ord with zero is zero. Zero ord with zero is zero. Zero ord with zero is zero. Zero ord with one is one. And zero ord with zero is zero. And they exactly match. So it proves for every value of the independent variables, both sides. are equal. So that proves this multiplying and factoring theorem. Okay, so that's how it proves it. All right, moving on. So figure four. So the questions on figure four, this drawing shows a two-layer POS network. True or false? No. It shows a two-layer SOP network. Remember, SOP, we sum up the product terms. Product means and and the OR gate sums them up. A POS would have input OR gates and an output AND gate. Okay, uh, let's see. Select the correct answer that matches the circuit. So, okay, so what is this? Well, this is easy. This is A prime D plus B C plus A B prime. That's all there is to it. Okay, and, uh, okay. And then, uh, next figure five a true type or equivalent font to print a b is the same as his ascii value no the font the font uses glyphs if, if you looked up glyphs and learned about them a little bit you you should remember that the glyphs are very complicated they're 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 basically curves uh splines i guess and uh and they define both sides of the of the character and the space in between them is the darkened space and that's why they scale appropriately because these are these are these are glyphs or they're kind of vectors and and they describe all of the, all the different parts of the curve for every letter so that you get you get a very precise description that scales and looks good as as you blow it up it, it doesn't get blotchy um, a regular binary number so it take and it takes a lot of bytes to do that so it's so an ascii value is seven bits worth of information but not a font it's many bytes a regular binary number is an example of a weighted code. Yes, that's correct. Binary numbers are, can be used in computations. And any weighted code that, that's, that, that, that's appropriately weighted 
could be used in computations, but you'd have to have the computations set up to, to treat the weights correctly. Um, normally, in, in, in the computer, we really only just use regular binary coding. Uh, and then other things like pictures, letters, fonts, uh, videos, they all use different encodings. But for, and then for floating point numbers, we use an entirely different encoding called IEEE 754. We're not going to really cover it in this course, but uh, it's, a very, it's pretty complicated. For single precision, we do 32 bits. For double precision, uh, 64 bits. And that, that's, those are defined in C. The standard changed a couple uh, of years ago, and now they've added some additional things. They've added a 24-bit um, version, and they've also added a uh, 128-bit uh, uh, version, some, uh, some other stuff, and also some base 10 stuff. Anyway, uh, so that's what's happened uh, to the IEEE 754 standard. And, it, and it's a, it, it uses sign and magnitude. So the first bit in the 32-bit uh, uh, single precision is a sign bit. And then you have uh, 8 bits of exponent and 23 bits of mantissa. So that's how it works. Yeah. And the, the mantissas are, are uh, all, they're, they're, they're justified uh, to have a, a single leading one and then a decimal point and then the 23 bits, the one and the decimal point are never uh, actually recorded. They're assumed, and that makes zero a special case because if you assume there's a one, then how would you represent zero? And the answer is it's a special case. Uh, and then we also have denormalized numbers in infinity, positive infinity, negative infinity, and we have not a number and some other stuff. All right, uh, but we're not going to go into that. Um, Gray codes generally require a lookup table to read the value for the actual data. That's right. They do require lookup tables. What is the output for a three input exclusive OR gate when the inputs are one, zero, zero? The output's one. Write a Boolean equation for this sentence. Okay, so this is, uh, this is very straightforward, not complicated. Let me switch to the paper though. Uh, okay, so. All right, so. So we can just simply do, and, and again, the whole point of this was to help you see that there can be uh, there can be ambiguity. Hopefully you can see this. Yeah, it's not too bad. So, so we'll say um, so we'll say win equals uh, so because um, it good defense that's a D and put together a final touchdown. So that's D and T and got breaks. So we'll call that B, or we're lucky. You know. Now, that's one way to write it, but does that mean that you have to get, uh, that you have to get uh, uh, good defense, touchdowns, and breaks, or you just have to be lucky? Uh, that's one way to look at it. Or you could say uh, uh, good defense, touchdowns, and you had to either get lucky breaks, or uh, you had to get breaks, or you had to be lucky. I guess breaks are luck too, so that's kind of redundant. So you can see this might be a better way to represent it. So we just threw the little parentheses in here, and you can multiply this in, and you could get DTB plus DTL. All right. So anyway, there you go. That's all I wanted you to do. No, no real agenda besides that. Sorry, I left my, was waking my wife up. Okay, now uh, this one, this one's pretty straightforward. This is the inverter. Uh, this is the AND gate. So this is an AND gate. And so if you remember how an AND gate works, if all the inputs are one, you get a one out. Any other situation, you get a zero. So, so, the, so the one, so F equals one is kind of the exception. And you're only going to get it on one combination. Now, in this case, C goes in as an inverter. So you want a 1 on this side, a 1 here, and a 1 here to get a 1. But the C value actually has to be a 0. So what, so what you really want, then, is 1, 1, 0, or A, B, C prime. Well, which row is 1, 1, 0? Well, that's 6 right here. So this row is the row where you're going to have a 1. And all the other rows are going to be zeros. I kind of started you off with a 0 there. And you could just do them one row at a time, so you could see how it worked. You could say, okay, let them all be. Let if a is zero, zero. 
If B is, so that's the first four rows automatically done. And then the next two rows, B is zero, so you know those are gonna be, those are gonna be zeros. And then you're just left with the last two. You have to figure that out. So if C is zero, then, uh, so A and B are both one for those rows. But if C is zero, before the inverter, after the inverter, it's one. So that, that gives you a one out, so that would be a one. And then this, it's a one, so it's a zero when it comes out, and that would give you a zero. So there you are. And then, uh, what would be the, uh, the max terms? So the only min term, if you wrote it in min term form, you would have F equals the sum of the little m's, six. That's it. But for the max terms, you're gonna have zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven. It looks like it's that one right there, number B. All right. And um, then, then here, you have to write this out two ways. Now that you know a little bit about K-maps, we could do a K-map, and if we do a K-map, it, it actually makes this super easy. It's a three variable K-map, we'll do it like this. And we have A at the top and B, C down. And so it's one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, don't care. Zero, zero, one, don't care. So basically you get this and this. That's it. And this is gonna be A prime, B prime, and this is gonna be A, B. All right, and that's all there is to it. Um, and so, so we know now you would wanna take the don't care as a one, but that's this solution. So when you take it as a one, you get A prime, B prime, plus A, B. But let's write the other one out. So we have min term zero, one, and uh, six. <coughs> so zero, one, and six. So we have A prime, B prime, C prime, that's zero, plus one, A prime, B prime, C, plus six, A, B, C prime. Okay, so A, B, C prime can't be combined with any of these, but these two can combine into A prime, B prime. And so plus this one, A, B, C prime. So that's what you have if you take the don't care to be a zero, and that's what you have if you take it to be a one. And this is simpler, so the choice, the better choice is to take it to be a one. And finally, we'll look at the <coughs> okay, finally we'll look at the adder problem, and then I'll go through some general questions, and hopefully that'll finish it out. All right, so the adder problem, um, all you have to do, so remember that this, this truth, this is, this is just two rows of a 512 row truth table, because it has nine inputs, four bits of A, four bits of B, and a carry in, nine inputs, and it has uh, five outputs carry out and four bits of sum. All right. So how do we get, how do we figure out what these should be for this particular row? So in this row, a three is one, a two is one, a one is one, a zero is zero, and so forth. So let's write these down. So uh, a three is one, 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 zero, and the b is zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, and the carry in is a one. So that gives us one, one, zero carrier one, zero carrier one. So our carry out is a one, and our sum bits are zero, zero, one, one. Carry out is a one, and it's zero, zero, one, one. Remember, that is the high order sum bit, S3, and this is S0, and that is the carry out. All right, do the same thing with this one. So we have zero, one, zero, zero, and the B is zero, one, 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 zero, one, 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 and the carry in is a zero. So you had zero and one and zero is one, zero and one is one, one and one is zero carrier one, and that's one. So that is carry out of one, and, um, wait, what are these? Uh, so, so we have zero and one is one, zero and one is one, one plus one is zero, and carry one, and one plus zero and zero, is a one, and then we have a carry out of zero. Yeah, so it's not a one, that's a zero. And it's one, zero, one, one. Let me make sure that is a, the correct answer. And that's figure eight, hang on one second. Yes, it was graded correctly, that is right. 
zero one zero one one. All right, and then I had a couple of other questions about that. Uh, we could turn the B input into a two's complement by inverting every bit of the B input and putting a carry in value of uh, putting a carry in value of zero. False. The carry in value needs to be one. Remember how do we do an inverse? So let's say we wanted to take this the second B. So so the second B is uh, is zero one one one. It's seven. Um, so we invert that and we'd make it um, we'd make it one zero zero. Oh, sorry. We'd invert every bit zero 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 one, and then we'd add one. So one zero zero one. Now, uh, yeah. So it's a little bit of a problem because, um, yeah. Oh well, no, maybe that's okay. Yeah, that's right. So, so that that would be this equals minus seven, okay? And then our a value is uh, a zero one zero zero, or that's uh, four. So we have four minus seven, and what's that going to be? It should be minus three, right? So let's see what we get. Uh, we got, um, in this case, we only look at the four bits. We don't look at the carry out. We ignore it in two's complement. So you have one, zero, one, one. Um, and so, so that's minus three. Yeah. Well, we have to invert it. So let's convert it. So that's one, uh, zero, one, zero. Oh, it's actually five. Oh, man. All right, let me do that again. I messed it up a little bit. Okay, so our a value, uh, our a value is uh, zero one zero zero, just taken from here. And then our b value is this, but we're going to invert it and turn it into a two's complement. And so first we're going to invert every bit here, so that's going to be zero 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 one, and we're going to make our carry in a one. All right. So that's, that gives us one, so zero, one, zero, zero, plus this minus number, which is one, zero, 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 plus the one. And when we add this up, we get one, a zero, one, one. Now, this is the answer. It is negative because the upper bit's a one. And then to find out what value it is, we have to two's complement it. And when we do that, we copy the first one and invert every other bit, one, zero, zero. So it turns out it's, it, it's a positive three here, so that's a negative three. So the answer of uh, four uh, plus a minus seven is a minus three. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but that's how it is. Uh, let's see. Okay, so trust me, it, it does really work out that uh, that as long as you keep the numbers uh, that will fit in eight bits. Remember, in uh, sorry, in four bits, in four bits we can have plus seven all the way down to minus eight, and so our plus seven is legal, uh, our minus seven was legal, and uh, and and our uh, plus four was fine. So those were okay, and we got the correct answer of three but we got it in a two's complement form that was kind of hard to see, so we had to convert it to positive, and then we could see it was three. All right, so remember the two ways we do the conversion. As humans, we start from the right side, we copy bits till we get to the first one, copy that also, and then flip every other bit. The machine does it by flipping every bit and adding one. And that's why when we want to change our adder into a subtractor, we can take one of our inputs and put inverters for all the bits, and then put a one into our carry in, which is the adding the one. And that is inverting every bit of the B input and adding one. Uh, now, you'd have to add two if you also were trying to convert the A to two's complement, but, but then we wouldn't want to do that. We, we, we want to subtract B from A anyway. So you get the idea. So it's really easy to turn an adder into a subtractor by using two's complement and our carry in function. Okay. But of course, any real device would have a much bigger uh, bit width. We were only doing four bits. Uh, normally have probably a 32-bit adder or a 64-bit adder or whatever. 
Okay, let me go through some of the general questions. I think there were a couple where we had to uh, change into SOP form. So I'll do those, and then I think I'm going to quit. Um, okay, so one of them was uh, convert to POS form A, B prime, C prime. Let's see, let me write this down. Here, I'll pause it for a second. Okay, so here's our problem. A, B prime, C prime, A prime, B prime, C, B prime, C prime, and C prime, B prime. Well, okay, so we have B prime, C prime, and a B prime, C prime, so we can get rid of that term using uh, S3, simplification three. And then here we have A prime, B prime, C. Here we have a C prime, B prime, uh, sorry, uh, a B prime, C prime. Oh, wait a minute. Let me just double check and make sure I copy that. Yeah, I knew I was confusing. So B prime, C prime, and C prime, B prime are the same. So we'll just get rid of C prime, B prime. Okay, because that's X plus X equals X. All right. Uh, okay, so now we're left with A prime, B prime, C plus uh, B prime, C prime. All right, so now we could do a couple different things. We could do M and F and use C and C prime, or we could do uh, the second distributive law, C2, uh, as a, uh, and, and we could do uh, use the B prime. So let's do, we'll use C2. So remember that's X plus Y, Z equals X plus Y quantity times X plus Z. So how are we applying it? We're applying it this direction. We'll let B prime be our X. So we have, we'll write B prime A prime C, that'll be our Y, plus B prime, oh, I, actually, I, I'm sorry. I, we're, we're just going to factor this out. Uh, we're going to write B prime times, we're going to use uh, C1, not C2. B prime times A prime C plus C prime. And now uh, using simplification one, uh, uh, 2, where we eliminate a literal, we can cross out that C and we get B prime times A prime plus C prime. All right? And so that's all there is to it. Um, and so that's in, uh, uh, that's in POS form. And we started off in SOP form. All right. Uh, you didn't see that. Sorry. Okay, let me pull this over here. Uh, okay, so we start with A, B, uh, A, B prime, C prime, A prime, B prime, C. B prime C prime and C prime B prime. Well, B prime C prime is the same as B prime C, uh, C prime B prime, so we get rid of that. And we have a B prime C prime, so we get rid of that. And now we're left with these two terms. And so in this case, we had, uh, we factor out the B prime and we get B prime times uh, A prime C plus C prime. Well, we can, uh, using the uh, uh, simplification three, uh, we can eliminate the literal. And uh, so that's uh, X, uh, plus uh, x y prime, I'm sorry, plus x prime y equals x plus y. That's S3. So that's what we have here. So we get rid of the C there, and we get B prime times the quantity A prime plus C prime, and that's our POS form. Okay, so that's one. Let's do another one. Uh, this one was select the correct values. Uh, let's see, no, never mind. This was... Uh, Uh, yeah, so so we have uh, changes expression to SOP, okay, and and it was a plus c times uh, b plus c times uh, a plus d times a. Well, so in this particular case, because we can use the a times x plus y equals x. We drop that term, basically. So we can drop this term and that term. And now we're just left with a times b plus c. We use the first distributive law as uh, conversion 1. And we distribute the a in here. And we get a b plus a c. That's in SOP form. And this one was in POS form. All right, that's easy. And then. Um, Let's see. Um, yeah, so C2 
So uh, xy plus w prime z. So xy plus w prime z. And what is that when we convert it uh, to SOP or to POS? All right. Well, in this case, we don't have any any variables that repeat, so we have to use the x plus y z equals x plus y quantity times x plus z. So that is the C2, the second distributive law. So this gives us uh, x y plus w prime quantity times x y plus z. Now we can use this C2 again on in here. Let z be x and x y be uh, x y z, and that and then same thing here. Let w prime be x and x and y be y z, and we just get uh, w prime plus x quantity times w prime plus y quantity times z plus x quantity times z plus y, and that's the final answer. Four terms. Okay. And then the last one is uh, convert a, AX plus AY, AX plus AY to uh, POS. Well, all we have to do uh, is factor out the X, X times A plus Y, and that is in uh, POS form. And that's SOP, and this is POS. Okay? And that's, uh, I, don't, I didn't do that right. Uh, factor out the x, a. This should have been an a. Yeah. A, x times the quantity a plus y. Okay? All right. Okay, well, so uh, with that, I think I'm going to stop. Uh, this should hopefully help you. You can look at this, and you should be able to figure out all the answers for the test, plus... Uh, I, you can now should be able to see it uh, in, on Blackboard. Should go back, be able to go back and look at your test, see what, see how you did on Blackboard, and and uh, see all the correct answers and see where you messed up. And then next Wednesday, uh, you can bring bring your information with you. We'll go over it in class, and I'll give you some points back. And we will meet next Wednesday in person. Promise. Uh, all right. Again, yeah, sorry for being forgetful today, um, but <clears throat> well, whatever. All right. Uh, so, uh, with that, I'm stopping.